God bless you. Good morning. We come at this time now to go down to the liquid grave. We have one who has completed all the necessary requirements to become a member of the Beulah Baptist Church, and that's young Carmelo Bynum. Amen? We know that through our baptism that it symbolizes and represents the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. When you go to the liquid grave, they're going to ask you to hold your breath, and that represents death. Then they're going to completely submerge you beneath the water, and that is the burial. And the resurrection is when they bring you up out of the water, meaning you're going to walk into the newness of life as you join and union with our Lord and Savior. Amen? So we're excited for you, and I know your mom is excited. Amen. So we're going to ask the family of Carmelo to come down, and we're ready. We have our prayer led by Deacon George Watts. Good morning. Let us bow in prayer. All wise and heaven, heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, O oh God. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for this candidate, Father, who has come to give his life to you, O oh God, to satisfy one of two ordinances of your holy will, water baptism, Father. Father, we pray that you bless him immensely, O oh God, as he becomes a soldier on the battlefield for you, Father. We thank you that even at his age that he can go down and let the old self die and come up new, a new creature in Christ, Father. Father, we thank you for his family. We thank you for all those that are here to witness and support him, O oh Father. We ask that the blessings go not only to him, but to his loved ones as well, Father. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to order his steps, give him favor, that he grow in the knowledge of you, Father, that you would be in every facet of his life, Father, that he will reach his destiny, that is your will. So bless him now, Father, as he comes, bless him as he goes, and bless his family and his loved ones. It is in the name that is above every name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Take me to the Anyone else would like to come forward to see our candidate they are they feel free to come up our candidate this morning is mr. Carmelo Bynum <laughs> amen as Carmelo face front he's getting final instructions and it's according to his profession of faith that we now baptize this, our young brother, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the precious Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs>
on, put your hands together all over the building. Have God been good to anybody? Have God been good to anybody? Come on, give the Lord some praise in this place. talk about me but I'm so many people talk about me but I'm so many people talk about me I don't let that hinder me I'm going on with the Lord oh yeah here's another thing sometimes I feel my work is in vain but I'm sometimes I feel my work is in vain but I'm Sometimes I feel my work is in vain, but I'm going on just the same. I'm going on with the Lord. Oh, yeah. This is my verse here. Listen, Satan tries to turn me around, but I'm. Satan tries to turn me around, but I'm. Satan tries to turn me around, tries so hard to knock me down.
going out my way. I'm going on with the Lord. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going on. Clap those hands. I'm going on. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Father. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for holding me in the hollow of your hand. So many told me that I wouldn't make it. So many told me that I couldn't take it. But I got my hand wrapped in the wine and chain. I got my hand wrapped in the wine and chain. My soul been a anchor. My soul been a anchor. My soul been a anchor. My soul been an anchor. My soul been an anchor. My soul been an anchor. A deep in Jesus' name. 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 A deep in 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 a deep higher. so good to me. You've been so kind. you made a way when I couldn't see my way. Korean try to stop me. Korean try to block me. But I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on. Listen here. You may do what you may. But move on out my way. Give the Lord some praise. Bless the Lord. Amen. I'm going on with the Lord. God bless you. Good morning. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. We welcome you on today. Amen. Our pastor is away teaching and, uh, and preaching. He's there celebrating with his son and our brother, the Reverend James Nathaniel Hassel in Kingdom. Amen. On today. So we pray God's blessings on pastor and the word that he will bring forth and traveling grace as they return to us. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, amen. Welcome and birthdays. Amen. So I'm going to assign welcome and birthdays. Come on, Nessa. Come on, Nessa. It's so good to see Deacon Jim back in the house. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Do we have any special guests here on today who happen to be visiting for the first time? If so, could you please stand, state your name, where you're from, and please remain standing until I have properly welcomed you. Good morning. My name is Ronald Mayfield. Oh, thank you. Good morning. My name is Ronald Mayfield, and I'm from the Bronx. I'm sorry, from Brooklyn, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and my church is Greater Refuge Temple, and with Bishop Wright is the pastor and leader. Uh, good, good morning. We're uh, glad to be here. My name is Alonzo Unley, and my wife, Dorothy. We're visiting from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I formerly just live in Pigskill, New York, but we have moved to more Myrtle Beach. We've been there for the last 10, 12, 14 years. And we're visiting our, my sister-in-law, 
Quinn Hall. I know you all know Quinn. <laughs> Wayne Hall only, yes, I don't want to forget that. <laughs> and we're very happy to be here. We're uh, members of the uh, Risen Christ Lutheran Church in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and we're, uh, we send uh, their regards to you. We're, we're happy to be here. Thank you. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Jesse Voigt Bottom and Lady Jackie Wet Bottoms, in their absence, We'd like to welcome you to the Beulah Experience. We're glad that you decided to worship God with us on today and pray that this is not your last time. Amen. Our church theme for 2018 is returning to your first love. Remember, repent, and return. Taken from Revelation 2, verses 4 and 5. Amen. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Our mission statement is to glorify God as we win the lost, build a believer, and equip the worker as to make disciples who can make disciples, who can make disciples. And how do we do this? We mix in the word with faith. Amen. And so um, the usher will give you a um, CD, a pen, and a card. We ask you to please fill out the card and place it in an orphan basket. The pen and the CD is yours to keep. At this time, we have something very special for you. Welcome to the Beulah Baptist Church. We are so glad you're here. Welcome to the Beulah Baptist Church. Oh, welcome to the Beulah Baptist Church. Oh, welcome to the Beulah Baptist Church. If you came from far and near, we are so glad you're here. Welcome to the Beulah Baptist. Come on, we're going to say that one more time, one more time. We're welcome to the Beulah Baptist Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, birthdays. If you are celebrating a birthday from today, May 27th through Saturday, June 2nd, please stand, state your name, let us know when your birthday is, and age is optional. But I'm nosy, so I want to know. We have any birthdays? All right. My name is Tracy Daniels Jr. and on June 2nd, I'll be 11 years old. Hi my, hi, my name is Lauren Anderson. On June 2nd, Saturday, I will be 57 years old. Uh, my name is Carvin Mitchell. On the 28th of May, tomorrow, Monday, I will be 72 years old. Good morning, my name is Robert Falk. May 29th, this year I'll be 51 years old. Hi, on June 1st, well my name is Deanna Krantz, and on June 1st I'll be 18.
Okay, the birthday song. One more, more. Good morning. My name. Good morning. My name is Marilyn Ash, and on Wednesday, May the thirtieth, uh, we have turned sixty-five.
George can't arrive, and then escape the gate. We're excited the host of it has been stole when conference of the Rikers as said, uh, to train and equip participants for the wonderful work of reaching our communities for Christ. The gate wood of Gated Wood Ministries will be our facilitator. Join us, please. On Saturday, July 21st, the Scholarship Ministries 5th Annual Scholarship Award Banquet will be held at the Bill Moore Gateway at 12 30 p.m. And the guest speaker will be the Reverend Weldon McWilliams IV of Christ Temple Baptist Church of Highsville, New Jersey. The cost is $45 per person. Children start and under is $20. There is no fee, however, for viewers, college students, high school students who have completed the ninth grade. RSVP is required. And we're asking that all students confirm their attendance by signing up in the vestibule or with each college ministry member by July 9th. For further information, we're asking you to contact Sir Peter Leola McSee. God bless you. Don't forget to log on to www.viewingaway.org and click live. Uh, Deacon Seaton, right? to come with the, an announcement. Good morning, Beulah. How is everybody doing this morning? Looking wild, wonderful, and beautiful. Let me ask all these fine-looking men to stand up for just a moment. Stand up, men. Whether you're married or not, you heard the announcement this morning, and we are inviting all you ladies to come out in June the 17th to celebrate our Men's Day downstairs. We're going to have various amount of food. I'm not going to extend the word there menu to you. You come and find out what it is that you're going to eat that day. But it's going to be something good. Let me say, it's, it's only going to cost you $10. $10, that's all per person. Sign up. I think there's only two of us here on the marriage ministry right now. See me or Deacon Bush. If you want to um, give you $10, now, or sign up in the vestibule. Let me encourage you. We're going to have some little surprise for you. We have some sisters in this church that can sing, out sing us. So I want you to come. I'm not going to tell you who they are. You know them. But if you want to hear them, come on out. And hear those sisters sing. They sing your socks off your feet. So now, I'm going to leave this with you. Don't be afraid of the dark. Just come to the light. And see the light shine. And that day, right after service, we'll be going downstairs. And we're going to celebrate. And Reverend T always have a little something that he plays. Maybe we can shake a few legs. You never know. Come on down and enjoy that day with us. God bless you. Men, you may be seated. Amen. With all the joy that's going on, amen. Again, our pastor and first lady are, are traveling to Yonkers, New York, and we, we wish them well again, and we pray God's blessings on him as he stands to deliver the word. Amen. And then I just want to just, just to introduce someone else to you this morning, to someone else's. Amen. We had a grand time here on Friday. And it is my delight and my joy. I need y'all to get together for a little bit while you're in church. Just one quick minute. Can you run to it? Run to you. I want to run to you. Amen. This is our newest Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Williams, amen. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We bless God for you. Amen. We ask that you take your bulletins home so that you'll know what's going on in the life of our church. Uh, there are a lot of reminders. Uh, first of all, we have <clears throat> service here on uh, Tuesday. That Not here, I'm sorry. That'll be at Mount Carmel for the mother of Krista and Aisha Mayo Reed, uh, Mother Rosa Brown. Her service is at 7 p.m. at Mount Carmel in Newburgh. And then Wednesday, we have a uh, service at 11 a.m. for Teddy Van Dyke. He is the brother of Lisa Cummins and Donna Cummins. Amen. And then Friday, uh, we have services for uh, Charles Stout here in the sanctuary. He is the uncle of Dorothy, cousin of Lothary, father of Carlissa, amen, husband of Shirley, amen. I'm trying to remember all the names, amen. So we ask that if you are available to come out and join us for each of these homegoing services. For uh, Deacon Stout, Reverend Bruce will be the eulogist, amen. So uh, we're looking for your attendance on that. Uh, our lamp speaker, there's been a change in the name. And Troy Dancy, it will be our lamp speaker. And then um, church council meeting uh, will not meet after lamp. Pastor will be officiating a renewal of wedding vows for Reverend and Mrs. Byron Williams over at Baptist Temple in Newburgh. Amen? Amen. I think... Give me one more second. We ask that you be in continued prayer for the families of Gwen Pearson, Thomas Daniels, Evelyn Dancy, Michelle Tillery. Amen. And then Pass is asking us, as many as can go, the bus is leaving at 1 p.m. We want to beat the traffic. Going down to Harlem, uh, going to Macedonia as he celebrates and uh bring the word for Pastor Isaac Graham's uh, annual day. The combined choir will sing and as many ushers and members that can go and help him celebrate as we, as together. Amen. So, excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and um, we know that this weekend is, uh, has been set aside for us by Congress as we uh, honor and salute and remember those who have uh, given their lives to secure our freedom. And this morning, we are blessed to honor Beulah's fallen heroes. Amen. So as Deacon Joe will come, we bless God for their memory. And we ask that at this time that we offer a word of silent prayer. God bless you. Beulah's departed veterans moment. Kevin Towns. William Muse, Thurman Owens, Cedric Quattlebaum, Harvey Everhard, Franklin Jackson, Robert Townsend, Robert McRae, Valentine Benjamin, Wallace Porter, Roy right. We're asking all veterans who are here, we ask that you stand and please remain standing as we offer a salute.
This concludes our moment of silence for the Beulah Baptist Church veterans. And we do thank Deacon Joe Guest, and we thank you and all the parents of those who have fallen by the wayside. Amen. Amen. Brother Joe has to change. No, he doesn't do that this time. I take that back. Vanessa Roberts is back to give an uh, offertory appeal. As she comes, we're going to ask that all the children who are part of our children's church to go downstairs to the lower, the lower wing, K through 3, to my far left. Grades one and two, the first aisle, three and four in the middle aisle, five and six on my far right. We bless God for Minister Cheryl and those who give service and leadership to our young people. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hello again. This is offering time. Why do I tithe? Well, for a number of reasons. So glad you asked. I tithe because I am happy. I tithe because I am free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. I tithe because it strengthens my relationship with God. I tithe because of his goodness and his mercy. I tithe because God is my all in all. I tithe because to me, God is like drinking Maxwell House coffee. He is good to the last drop. I tithe because to me, God is like magic scotch tape. I can't see him, but I know he's there. I tithe because to me, God is like GE. He brings good things to life. When I do wrong, when I sin, and we know we think of sin as being something black, God is like tithe. He gets out the dirt that others leave behind. God is like Campbell's soup. He's mm-mm good. I treat my tithing like my American Express card. I don't leave home without it. With that being said, the gold trays are for mission. The white baskets are for general offering. The brown baskets are for property acquisition. And the tithes go in the tithe box. You are now under the directions of the ushers. God bless you. Lord, you promise if I keep my 
my eyes on you. You never turn away from me. No, you never no. Turn away from me. Oh, with a sincere heart, if I call upon your name, you never turn away from me, no. You said you'd give me everything I need, Lord. Oh, I came for the living You said you would, Lord. That's what I believe. Say it again, I came. Holy Father, we come before you this morning thanking you, O oh God, for the gifts that have brought forth back into your storehouse. Father, how we thank you for giving us the opportunity to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We ask your blessing upon those that gave and a special blessings for those who had it not to give. May they don't go wanted and tomorrow for that which they have given. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All thanks. We see that we are few in numbers today, but for those who are here, it was your destined to be here. Amen. Amen. And for those we know that, that this holiday weekend, we're praying traveling grace for those who are on the highways and in the air. Amen. We pray they safe traveling and safe return. Minister West will, no, let me back up. Minister Yvette will introduce our preacher for the morning. Minister West will read our scripture, and then Deacon Fred will come with our morning prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. I have been asked to introduce the preacher for the hour. And while I was sitting there, I was thinking about what can I say about her that really will get you pumping for what she's going about to bring because I'm expecting you to bring it. So what I came up with is I'm going to spell sister. S is for someone who loves the Lord. I is for inspiration and inspiring. S is for someone who walks in love with all that she does and all the, and all the people that she touches. T is for she tears down strongholds and stands in the gap when you don't even think she's there. E is for exciting and enthusiastic about spreading God's word. And R is for she rests and she rules with God and slaying, sla slaying with using his holy words. So I present to some and I introduce to others Miss Stacy Bottoms. Praise the Lord. Today's word comes out of the book of Revelation. The last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. 
chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. If you don't have it, say amen. Hearing no amens, the word of the God, the word of the Lord reads. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of Nicolaitanes, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That is, this is the word of the Lord. Please remain standing for the altar prayer. Brothers and sisters, it's prayer time. If you would like to come and stand before the altar and bring your prayers and problems here and leave them at the altar. Let us bow together. Our Father and our God, again we come before you with thanksgiving on our heart. Thanking you, Father God, to let us gather one more time in this house of prayer, Father God. Father God, we know we have many needs and many prayers, Father, but we just thank those who are here right now, Father God. We like to pray for our safe travel for our pastor and our first lady, Pastor Jesse Ward Bottom and his and First Lady Jackette Bottoms as they t travel up and down the highways today, Father God. We ask that you would bring them back safely to this place. Father God, we just thank you for the people who are gathered here before us today. Although we are few, we are here, Father God, and we come expecting blessings, Father God. So we ask right now that a bless our Heavenly Father as you know how. We ask special blessings upon the person who bring the word today, Father God, the Reverend Stacy Bottom, Father God, let us continue to pray for O Heavenly Father until she brings us the word, Father God. We pray, O Heavenly Father, for the many ministries that keep this church going, Father God. We press for the pray for their health and strength, Father God, that they will continue to bless the church through their services and their giving, Father God. Father God, we just ask you to continue to bless our children's Father God, for they are lost out here, Father God, and they need us more than ever, Father God. We just, our birth children, our grandchildren, our cousins, wherever they are, Father God, we need to pray for them. We need to continue to keep them in prayer, Father God. There's a lot going on in this world, oh Heavenly Father, that they should not be involved with. But I believe that prayer is the answer, oh Heavenly Father. Father God, when we've done all that we can, we just look up to the heavens and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't forget. Amen.
just to be close to you, just to be close to you, is my desire.
God a hand praise in this place for another day. Just to be close to him is a desire. Just to be in his presence is a blessing. We thank you, Lord, for another day. I just want to give honor to Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life. He's the head of my life. He's the love of my life. And I just want to give honor to him and thank him for another day. And I give honor to my pastor and my first lady in their absence and Reverend Sarah presiding and my sister Yvette for that beautiful introduction and just my brothers and sisters and everybody here. Just thank God for you today. Just going to have a word of prayer before the word of God is given. Father God, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for this time. Thank you for another chance to come into your house together and to praise you, God. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart represent you 100%. God, remove me but, and put me behind the cross, Lord, and let what I say touch the hearts of your people today, God. Use me, God. I am a willing vessel. Use me in whatever way you want to use me on today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today. Minister Gill read for you Revelations chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And sometimes when we hear something from that book, we, <laughs> we think it's all doom and gloom. But this word today is a word of encouragement and hope for God's people. And my topic is get it right. Turn to your neighbor and tell them to get it right. Now, Revelation chapter 2 begins with a series of letters to seven churches. And each of the seven letters is a prophetic word from Jesus through the Spirit inspiring John to write. The letters to the seven churches describe actual conditions in each church at the end of the first century. And each church had its own unique strengths and weaknesses, so a distinct message was given to each. Though these letters were written to the church back in the first century, they are just as relevant for today's church. So I asked the question, which church are you? We have the church of Smyrna that was known as the persecuted church. Jesus commended them for withstanding poverty, afflictions, and slander from those who claimed to be Jews but were a synagogue of Satan. They also were forced to suffer, and this church did so good that Jesus had nothing to condemn them for. But then we move on to the church of Pergamum, and they were known as the compromising church. I hope nobody in here is known as the compromising church. But Jesus said they held true to his name even when one member was put to death, but then says this is the city where Satan lives and had his throne, the compromising church. Then we have the church Thyatira, which was known as the corrupt church. The good thing Jesus had to say about them was they were known for their love and faith, service, and their perseverance, but he condemns them saying they tolerated the false prophetess Jezebel. And let me tell you something, if you've never experienced Jezebel, <laughs> pray that you don't. I have experienced the spirit of Jezebel, and I tell you, if you do, go the other way. Do not entertain Jezebel, don't argue with Jezebel, because Jezebel's purpose is to destroy men and women of God. So when you come across the Jezebel spirit, run the other way. But I need you to ask your neighbor, which church are you? We have the church of Sardis, which was considered the dead church. Jesus says that they were found worthy, but they had a reputation of being alive when they were really dead. They came to church. They worship just like we have done. They, they come to meetings, but they are really dead. Church, are you alive or are you dead? Next was the faithful church. This was the church of Philadelphia. Jesus had nothing but good to say about them. He said that they endured with little strength. They kept his word and they did not deny his name. They endured patiently. Then the last church is the church of Laodicea, 
which in my opinion is the worst church because this church was a lukewarm church. Jesus said that they had some good deeds, but they were lukewarm and about to be spewed out of God's mouth. Do you understand what it, be, what it means to be spewed out of somebody's mouth? Could you imagine making God feel sick to his stomach and he wants to spit you out of his mouth? That's what the church of Laodicea did because God would rather you be hot or cold. Being a lukewarm church on the fence, straddling, don't know what one foot in the church, one foot in the world, God spews you out of his mouth. Also, they were rich and thought that they didn't need Jesus for anything, but they were sadly mistaken. Jesus said in Matthew that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, he doesn't say that they can't get into heaven, but it's hard because, because people with money, that money becomes their God. With money comes arrogance and fulfillment, and they think they don't need God. Church, is there something that you put before God? If there is, knock it out. Put God first in everything. So I ask again, which church are you? Which church are you? Now, the first letter was the church of Ephesus or the Ephesian church. And this was appropriate because the church of Ephesus was the largest city of the Roman province of Asia. Now, this city is described as breathtaking and quite prosperous since it was the center of travel and commerce. It was also famous for the temple of the Greek demon called Diana, which was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The temple of Diana was the center of demon and pagan worship of that day. Now, if we go back to Acts chapter 18, where Paul briefly visited Ephesus, along with some of his companions, his ministry was very effective there. And as a result of his preaching and teaching, many were saved and the gospel was heard throughout Asia. Now, the power of God and his word was shown when the new converts wanted to break the magic of the pagan past and burn their books of witchcraft and paganism publicly. And because of this, the gospel continued to flourish. But y'all know the enemy didn't like this. Y'all know he couldn't stand this. And because of the size and the dedication of the Ephesian church, they became a threat to Satan's kingdom. So now people want to fight. They want to try to kill Paul and his companions. You know how it go. When, when we're on the Lord's side, persecution comes. Threats will come. Enemies will rise up against you. But I come to tell you today, don't give up. To endure till the end and fight the good fight of faith. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. I tell you, church, don't underestimate the devil and think that he don't have no power. You know, I heard people say he ain't got no power. We, we give him too much credit. Sometimes we do because sometimes things we go through is our own fault. Things we go through is seeds that we have sown. Things we go through is just life, but we have to know when it is the devil. And he does have some power, but let's not get it twisted now. He ain't got more power than God, but he does have power. And let me say, let me tell you why I say this. Because anytime someone can bring sin into heaven, Anytime he can cause a third of the angels to backslide, anytime he can make angels commit treason and turn against God, this shows that he has some power. He tricked and conned and deceived these angels who were flawless. They were perfect. And if he can do that to them, what do you think he can do to us? What do you think he can do to the flesh? And understand these angels did not strive to be holy as you and I do. But these angels were, were created holy. So if he can trick them, think what he can do to us, church. Don't underestimate his power. Who you think got you running to Jesus and who got you praying? The devil. Who, you, who got you fighting for your life and tempted to go back into the world? The devil. Who wants you to turn against God? Who wants you to go straight to hell because that's where he's going to end up at? The devil. My brothers and sisters, don't sleep on him. Always be ready to fight the good fight through spiritual warfare. Even when you get tired, keep pushing. When it seems to be too much, keep pushing. When people seem to forget about you and 
leave you hanging, continue to push. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall push a standard against him. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing, church. Now, the church of Ephesus was known as the loveless church. And unfortunately, we have Matthew, Jesus said that the church will, go cro will grow cold. But just as Jesus addressed the other six churches, he had something good and something bad to say. But I've learned something from Jesus the way he, the way he did things. Because he didn't just start out by telling the church what they did bad. He told them the good stuff first. And then he said, okay, you, you did this good, but this is what you have done wrong. He complimented them first because I don't know about you, but when somebody calls me and start out with negative stuff, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing else. The conversation is over. <laughs> we have to learn to tell people, don't tear people down, but, but we also have to learn to be able to take constructive criticism. And that's what Jesus did to each of these churches. But now I got four quick points for you, and then I'm going to take my seat. We'll see in this scripture in Revelations 1 through 7 that first Jesus commends, then he condemns, then he commands, and then he gives a covenant. So verses 2 to 3, Jesus commends the Ephesian church by telling them he knows their deeds, meaning that he knows and he sees all. He sees their perseverance and hard work. They did not tolerate wicked men who claimed to be apostles but, but were not. Church, don't be fooled by the, these false prophets with doctrines of demons. See, Paul warns these, of these savage wolves and, and false doctrine in Acts 20. But beware of these TV evangelists. Listen, when you don't come here, don't turn on that TV and, and, and listen to them T.D. Jakes and, and, and Joel Austin because, see, what happens is all they preaching about is prosperity. Jesus don't care about money. He didn't care about money when he was here. And, and all they want is your money. Beware of the secular preaching telling that we have to join the world to bring them to Christ. The devil is a liar because the Bible says that we are enemies of God if we are lovers of this world. We reach them to recruit them, but we, we don't lower the standard of God. The, these TV preachers are only preaching God's love and not the truth and his judgment. See, we have to understand God has already showed his love towards us. He did that in one event by giving his only son to die for us. So that's how he has showed his love. But, but the God that we will face is a God of judgment. See, right now we are under grace, but understand that that grace clock, it will stop ticking one day. It will. So, but John 1 and 14 says that Jesus was full of grace and truth, meaning that there's a balance. See, everybody always says, oh, we got to show love. We got to show love. Yes, we do. But we also have to give truth. Understand that grace is unearned, but truth is love. Love is rebuke and love is correction. So, church, don't get mad when somebody speaks truth to you. It's all love. We, look, I know I need to be checked. Sometimes I need to be checked, and that's cool. Do not be mad when somebody corrects you. We have to take that correction. If, if, if I don't tell you the truth, I don't love you. I want you to go down the path you're still going down. I don't want you to be saved. We have to tell each other the truth. No matter if it offends, we have to tell the truth. Church, get it right. Tell your neighbor to get it right. Get it right. We still have a chance. But verse 4 says that Jesus condemns the Ephesians by telling them they've lost their first love. They've left their first love. I'm sorry. Now, I know we've been in relationships, and when we first meet somebody and we're so in love, and we always want to be around them. If we're not around them, we're talking or we're texting, you know, planning for the next day, and we just always want to be in their presence. And that's usually how it is when we first accept Jesus into our lives and the Ephesians in the early years they were on fire for Christ then over the years their knowledge increased but their passion decreased see we come to church and it's just church as usual we come to meetings we come to Sunday morning service we come to lamp and it's just church as usual we're so we're so busy with just serving God that we forget about having an intimate relationship with him because it, it, it 
See, we can come to church and we can be at these meetings. We can be here every day of the week, but be some mean. We just, people are just mean. Just mean. How, how do you show in the love of Christ and you just mean? You might as well just stay home. We got people who tithe that's just mean. They tithe. They, they, they're the biggest givers in the church, but mean as rattlesnakes. Can't trust them. Show love. <laughs> and when we have that connection with God, that's what we show, period. You know, sometimes I, I have to say, I, I get annoyed. Just last week I had a day where people was just annoying me. Everywhere I went. But I said, God, I'm just going to stay in the house. <laughs> I ain't going, once I got off work, I went home, I stayed in the house. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do that, you know, but we have to continue to show love to people. Even when people don't deserve it, we have to show them love. But, but the church of Ephesus, see their salvation um, the joy of their salvation was gone. They had to reconnect with God, and that's what Jesus condemns them for. But then down in verse 5, he commands them. He said, remember where, have you, where you have fallen from, and repent, and do the first works. And now the message Bible says that they, it was a Lucifer fall. Yikes, a Lucifer you know how bad that fall is? Satan ain't got no chance. There's nothing he can do to get to heaven. We don't want to have a Lucifer fall because that is it. Our judgment is set and ain't no coming back. Church, get it right. But Jesus says, remember, because they have gotten comfortable and lax in this backslidden condition. And I was just saying, we've been in church for so many years, but sometimes when we do get lax and comfortable, it's not always intentional. Because I even know for myself, it's, I, I have to learn the balance. I have to check myself like Stace. Do you have to be at everything? Because sometimes we need a break and we get burnt out. And you have to know that, but be able to stay with God and come back and kind of relax. And it's not always intentional, but that's why we can never forget where God has delivered us from and saved us from. Remember your first love, the one who gave his life so that you may have everlasting life, the one who died for our transgressions, the one who comforts us when no one else is there, the one who gave us joy in the midst of sorrows that we experience. He, he gives us peace in the midst of trouble. The one who never sleeps nor slumber and all power is in his hands. Get back to him and forsake everything else. Forsake it. Get back to being a loving church, loving one another, not tearing each other down through lies and gossip and slander and stop judging and having respect the person. And once we do that, we have to repent. Repent. Don't look at everyone else, but focus on ourselves. I can't worry about what Minister Ann is doing. I can't worry about what Deacon Cockerham is doing. That ain't none of my business. Focus on ourselves. Turn from your wicked ways because the day is coming. And that day is the day of the Lord. It's coming. So repent now because what happens when he appears, you won't have a chance to repent. You won't have a chance to redo anything. You won't have a chance to come about the bar. You won't have a chance to come about the club or stop living together and you not marry. You won't have a chance to get rid of the hate in your heart or take back the terrible things and lies you said about your brother and sister. You won't have the chance to forgive that person that hurt you 30 years ago. Let it go. Let it go. Because when he comes back, he comes back as a thief in the night. We won't have a chance to tell God that we're sorry. Now is the time to repent and change. Make it right while you still got the chance. Tomorrow is not promised. Get it right and repent. Get it right. And Jesus says, if you don't repent that he will remove your candlestick or your lampstand. Now, do we know what happens when the lampstand is removed? <laughs> that means that the presence of God is gone. It's gone. And there are actual churches who are operating with no presence of God. No presence of God. They do an outreach. They out in the, in the world and trying to win souls and doing soup kitchens and 
meetings and church, and God ain't even present. Ain't even present. And the sad part is that they don't even know. <laughs> they believe that they are operating in spirit and truth. But what's even sadder, church, and I just pray, I don't want anybody to go through this. When we stand before Jesus and we say, Lord, but I've done this in your name. I've cast out demons in your name. I've, I've fed the hungry in your name. I've, I've, I've healed the sick in your name. I've given money to those who needed money. I did this all in your name. And Jesus says, I do not know you, worker of iniquity. Depart from me. Don't be that person. Get it right. Today is the day to repent. Get it right. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. Verse 7, Jesus gives us a covenant or a promise. He says, to the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in paradise of God. The tree of life is symbolic for eternal life after the death of Jesus. But let's be clear that this promise is only to those who overcome. My brothers and my sisters, today is the day for repentance so that your souls will be saved. If you need, if you're in need of Jesus, if you need to rededicate your life or even just give your life to Christ, today is the day. Repent. Don't look back at what, at what has brought you down because that's just the trick of the enemy. He's going to hell. His, 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 his eternity is already, it's already, um, um, God already, it's already done. He's going into the lake of fire. We still have a chance while we are breathing to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. To turn back to our first love and to forget that stuff which is behind us and to look forward, continue to press on because we know what we're pressing towards. Our reward is not here on earth. Our reward is in heaven. God said that he will give you the crown of life. We just have to endure. I don't care what comes up against you, what the enemy does in your family, what he's doing at your job, what he's doing here in the church. It does not matter. Continue to look forward. Continue to look forward. God didn't make us to be scared, to be scared of anything. Because with the power of Jesus Christ, we have the victory. It's already done. Just claim it. It's already done. God didn't make us to be scared and, and to be defeated. Enemy, you have been served today with eviction notice. I'm tired of you coming into my house, messing with my family. I'm tired of you coming into the church, causing discord. I'm tired of you using my manager and people that I love around me to try to bring me down. I'm tired of it. You are rebuked in Jesus' name. We got to stand up to him. It's power in the name of Jesus. It's power. Something goes wrong, Jesus. That's all we need to do is Jesus. Jesus. Whatever's going on, speak the name of Jesus. Speak life into your situation. We have the victory. We are overcomers. We are workmanship of God. We are more than conquerors. Don't ever feel defeated. I don't care what is going on. I don't care. God, Jesus died for us to have the victory. How dare us act like we can't handle what life throws. Look at what he went through. He died. They, they pierced him in his hands and in his feet. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he did for us. Get it right, church, and repent. Because he's coming back. And he's coming back for a glorious church. Without spots. And without wrinkle. And without blemish. Or any such thing. He's waiting for you to come to him. He's waiting for you to surrender all. Get right with him and repent. Endure till the end and turn from your wicked ways. Make a choice today to change and be holy as God commanded us to. Make a choice to persevere. Get right. Remember, repent, and return to your first love. And when you do, you will dwell with God in his kingdom forever. Oh, won't it be wonderful when we see Jesus? Won't it be wonderful over there? When we get there, won't it be wonderful?
wonderful. No more sorrows, no more troubles, no more burdens to bear. Hallelujah. Won't it be wonderful? Hallelujah. Repent, church, repent. Get it right. Oh, won't it be wonderful? Repent today. Get right with Jesus. Hallelujah. He's waiting. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, thank you. Hallelujah. Repent, church, repent. Woo, and, re and return to your first love. Return to him. For we still have the chance to. We still have it. While we have the chance, while we have breath in our bodies, let us not forget to praise him and worship him for what he has done in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. In the midst of it. He, God is still good. And he's still loving. And he's still wonderful. And he's still worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. To his name, glory, glory. Hallelujah. For he is good, church. For he is good. No matter what, he is good. God bless you. This is the invitation to Christ. The preacher said, it's time to get it right. Get right, church. Won't you come? The gift of salvation is free. God is knocking at the door. He's telling you this is the day. This is the day of salvation. Won't you come? Salvation is here. This is the opportunity. While breath is still in your body, still in your lungs, you can accept the gift of salvation. It is free. Come on to Christ. He's waiting for you. Y'all, come on, give it up. Get it right, I should say. Amen. Get it right. We bless God for the word of God and for the woman of God. Good word, Stacy. God bless you. Good word. It's a right now word. Amen. Our deacon brothers are going to pass among us our baskets of love offering. Amen. We know we can't pay Stacy, but what we're doing, we're just encouraging her to continue on in her studies, continue on in, in, in 
praising and preaching and teaching. Amen. The word of God. So we're asking you to give and give generously. Amen. So I'm sure if pastor was watching, he was well pleased all day long. Amen. From our morning service, amen, Reverend Miles Chandler, and the afternoon service of I'm sure the Reverend Stacy, receive it. That's all. <laughs> amen. We bless God also for our minister Pam was at Central, and Reverend Sheila was at Riverview today. So we pray God's blessings on them as they stand, after, as they stood to give the word. Amen. So we thank you. Keep Reverend Knight in your prayers also. He's still under the weather. He's coming along. He's coming along. He's coming along. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, O oh Father God, for the word that was presented today. We ask your richest blessings upon Minister Stacy, and we will forever remember, O oh Father God, repent and return. So, Father, we just ask right now that you would bless these offerings, O oh Father, those who gave, those who had the desire but not the resources. May they be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. We're doing good, amen. So we bless God for our men's choir today, amen. Y'all sang today, amen. God bless you. We're going to ask uh, Stace to go down, give remarks, and the benediction. How about that? And then, <laughs> amen. Let us all stand. Just want to thank God for this time and just thank you all. And um, we're going to pray and go on home. Father God, we just thank you for your word. And we thank you for the power of repentance. And we thank you for your, for your love and, and for continuing to love us in spite of. Just ask that you bless each and every one of us as we leave. For, protect us on the highways and byways, anybody that's traveling, Father God, and just those who weren't here and who are traveling, just continue to cover them, God. Just continue to cover this place, cover this church and our pastor and our first lady, and we just thank you again for everything. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.